Now that you have purchased your Purple Line Power Trailer Mover, check out this how-to video on installing the system. With your trailer parked on a hard flat surface, lay out all of the Purple Line Power Trailer Mover's parts and check them against the package contents diagram in the user manual. Also note the clearly marked safety instructions in the owner's manual prior to beginning the installation. Begin by taping the provided spacers to the rollers, which will ensure proper spacing to the tires during the installation process. Lay out all the parts on their respective sides of the trailer near the axles. Slide the main crossbars between each pair of motors. Hand tighten the retaining bolts, which will be torqued later. For box frame trailers, simply use the bracket as a template and drill through the frame. Use the provided nuts, bolts, and washers to attach the bracket to the frame. For your I-beam trailer, it's a bit more of a process. Ensure that the chassis hanging brackets fit the frame of the trailer, as well as clear all other trailer components. Once you determine the spacing between the clamping plates, you can stack the correct combinations of spacers, bolts, nuts, and washers, as well as the L-shaped bracket. You can hang the entire assembly from the chassis and slide it into place. Tighten the bolts and add additional washers if needed to make it fit the I section frame correctly. Use a box wrench and a ratchet to tighten down the bolts on the assembly. Place the two motor units on blocks. We use wood blocks and an appropriately sized toolbox to hold each side. Move both motor units on each side into place ensuring that the rollers are centered on the tires. Make sure there's enough room between the motors and the trailer frame so nothing will contact when the motors are in the engaged position. Once they are in proper location you can slide the clamping brackets into place. Loosely fit all the supplied bolts, washers, and nylon locking nuts. Tighten the bolts and nuts which clamp the motors to the L brackets. The pinch bolts, closest to the outside of the bracket, prevent the clamping brackets from moving front to back and are locked into place with lock nuts. Once both sides are in place and tightened, you can slide one side of the three-piece actuator bars onto each motor. Install and tighten the supplied machine bolt and nut using a wrench and screwdriver. Slide the centerpiece of the actuator bar into place in both of the outside bars. After ensuring that the motors and bars are parallel and the spacers are still in the correct location, torque the fasteners to proper specification on the hanging and clamping brackets. Also torque to spec the bolts and locking nuts on the main crossbars and actuator bars. Keep the sockets and torque wrench handy to recheck the fasteners after using the power trailer mover and driving with the trailer to ensure nothing has come loose. Install the chassis stop blocks to prevent the hanging brackets from moving on the trailer frame. Make sure to tighten the locking nut on the bolt to prevent it from rattling loose. Once the unit is secured to the trailer, you can remove the spacers from the rollers on the motor unit. Now the mechanical portion of the install is complete and you're ready to start the wiring process. Taping the two power wires together can aid in keeping them at the same distance while running them up the trailer chassis. Run the power wires through the split loom to help protect it. 
Run it along the bottom of the chassis to the front of the trailer where the control unit will be mounted. Once you've determined the location for the control unit, make sure there are no trailer components that could be damaged by the pilot bit and drill a hole through the floor. Once the pilot hole is drilled, use an appropriate size hole saw to give you enough room to feed all the required wiring through the floor. Drill a hole in the chassis near the batteries to mount the power isolation switch. Use the switch as a template and drill holes to attach the switch to the chassis. Fasten the switch to the trailer using the supplied bolts, washers, and nuts. Run the wiring for the motors under the trailer in a location where they are protected and out of the way of other components. Use cable ties to attach the wiring to other trailer components as you run it up the frame toward the control unit mounting location. Run the wiring up through the floor in our case into the storage unit where you can finish up adding terminal ends. Once you have the wires all run and secured under the trailer, cut the wires to the correct length. Strip the insulation, slide on the shrink tubing and attach the supplied crimp style female spade connector. Position and heat the shrink tubing. Fasten the control unit to an appropriate surface in the trailer. We put this one in the front wall of the front storage area. Consider storage space and potential damage to the control when choosing a location. Reference the instructions to correctly attach the wiring to the terminals on the control unit. Attach ring terminals to the power wires. Cut the wires to the right length to fit your application. Once the wires are complete, you can route them under the trailer. Attach the wiring from the control unit to one side of the isolator switch and the other side of the switch to a wire ran to the positive battery terminal. Route the wires up through the frame to where the batteries are mounted. In our case, there was a hole already in the chassis to run the wires. Attach the black wire to the negative terminal of the battery. Route it out of the way where it can be secured to the trailer and battery box. Attach the wiring from the isolator switch to the positive terminal of the battery, making sure the key from the switch is removed. Once all the wiring is connected and secured, you can power up the system by inserting the key into the isolator switch. Test the motors to make sure they are working correctly that they turn in the correct direction, and in the case of tandem axles, that they work at various speeds before engaging them with the tires of the trailer. Engage the rollers to the tires. Chucking up the engagement drill adapter to a cordless drill speeds up the process of engaging the rollers. Note that turning the spindle clockwise or counterclockwise for engagement-disengagement changes depending on the side of the trailer. Remove tire chocks and blocks and you're ready to move your trailer. We easily maneuvered our trailer out of our tight shop space and hitched it to the truck. It was a breeze with our newly installed Purple Line Power Trailer Movers. For more on Purple Line Power Trailer Movers and other Purple Line products, go to PurpleLineUSA.com.